Hello there, I am Giant Girl with more Pokemon Diamond Redo. In the last part, we took on, we finished Iron Islands, and now we're gonna take on the uh, Cantaloupe City Gym after returning from Iron Islands. After returning from Iron Islands, we came back to Cantaloupe City, and now we're gonna take on the gym. Let's talk to the Vice Giver. Hey there, Champ to be. The gym lady here uses a Steel type Pokemon. Steel type Pokemon are have high defense, so you have to hit them hard. Okay, let's do it. Let's take on this. Black Ball dude, I think he just has one Steelix, but hopefully Inferno can um, take down the Steelix that he has. Steel represents an un unbending spirit. If you if, if one refuses to accept defeat, the path is the path to victory reveals itself. Okay, so I, I arranged some of my Pokemon's moves off screen just to match the ones, just match the order of, in the list of the moves, of their move sets, um, to, to my, um, pra pra practice file. So yeah, okay, this is actually kind of going the right way, but I want to just go over here and it's a dead end, really. Um, let's take on this worker guy right here. I'm gonna check all the panels just because I haven't done this gym puzzle in a long time and they go by kind of quick too anyway so I'll try my best to go as fast as I can when doing the puzzle. A Pokemon gym isn't only about seeing how tough your Pokemon happen to be. It's so much deeper than just that. It's a test of you as a person. Okay, so up here, I think this is the right way too, I think. I could be wrong though. Yeah, it's the right, that's the actual right way. Because the other one just leads to a dead end, so you have to go back, but there's still a trainer back there. So let's do that that one instead. Um, was this, it was this one, right? Yeah, okay, good. I was right. Let's take on this worker dude. Up and down you go on the lifts. Me, I like to battle. Okay, moving on. See, that's a dead end, so you have to go back. So, I think it's this one again. We're going down here. Yeah, there we go. Let's take on this ace trainer. An ace has the knowledge and experience of battling at high levels. I'll demonstrate what that means to a noob like you. Don't call me a noob. I have five dream badges. Thank you very much. Yeah, don't call me a noob if you can't, like, um, faint one of my Pokemon with using two Pokemon. Jeez, you are so disrespectful. So yeah, we just made our way around here. This way is a dead end, I believe. Yeah, okay. So don't go that way. We well, want to go up, upwards. And you want to, if you go down here, it's also a dead end. Yeah, so don't go that way. I'm just showing that it's a dead end, basically. Let's take on this worker, dude. What do you have to say? Pokemon and people have worked together for many years. Let us show you an example of that history. I'm thinking that um, when uh, Rose actually learns uh, Petal Dance level 40, I'm going to probably get rid of Poison Jab. 
because um poison jab as i was thinking in the last battle like um not not as like the onyx or anything but like i was, I was thinking like um if i was to face a gold bat that wouldn't really do much against the gold bat i know shadow ball would be more effective so that's good but like poison is really only good against um you know grass type pokemon honestly and i might just wouldn't give it a poison jab actually so um and because poisons also doesn't affect steel type pokemon at all but steel type pokemon aren't really that common well it's in this gym but I, you know they're not really that common in Sinnoh. so um because i like having magic leaf because then i would then i would have two grass i would giga drain and magic leaf because magic leaf is a really is like basically a giga drain except for it doesn't miss but it doesn't ha inf heal me either it heal rose um, half of its HP that's inflicted on the opponent because I'd rather have um, Magical Leaf, Giga Drain, and Petal Dance as um, as you know Grass type moves because um, if I wanted to use a uh, Grass type move that wouldn't confuse me then in that case it would be Giga Drain but I don't want to use I don't always want to use Giga Drain because um, it's only 10 PP and I remember in third generation and uh, third generation and um before that it was only five power points but now they increased it to 10 in the fourth generation which is really nice that the game creators to do that so yeah i think i'm just gonna give it a poison jab because i was thinking like there's really not many i don't really want into if i want to fade a grass type pokemon i should use either inferno or um you know karen right here because they're my fire and flying type pokemon you know so i'm probably just gave it a poison jab because i don't really think I'd, it'd be much as used to me as Shadow Ball would, you know? And it'd still work out, really, because I want to keep ma a Magic Leaf. That's why I gave a hard skill to the movie learner. And I don't want to just waste it and, like, overwrite another move. And then I have to get another hard skill to try to fix it and stuff. And I don't want to do that because the Underground was very evil to me when trying to find hard skills. So, yeah. And now, um, Rose is level 36, so I just wanted to explain that little spiel. And if you're wondering why I didn't, um, why I didn't keep myself, we keep Inferno in and just use close combat on the Onyxes, well, it, it turns out if, um, you know, if I switch to, um, Roselia right away or Rose, and then Rose faints the, uh, the Onyxes, Rose gets more experience points, which I really want that to happen because I want Rose to get to level 40 as soon as possible so we can evolve it into Rose Raid. There we go, my whole spiel's over, thank you for listening. Or, um, pretending to listen if you just pretended to listen to me. Ah uh, yeah, we're coming out swinging with heavy duty with super heavy judo chops. Okay, so I forgot to actually switch back to Inferno for that Steelix when that came in, but it still worked out because I was able to faint it with two Giga Drains, so that's nice. Here's another Ace Trainer female, um, and she says, By focusing on only one type, you can really see the strengths and weaknesses of that Pokemon. In that last battle, Inferno grew to level uh, 37, which is really nice. And then go down here, and then this red one will bring you all the way to the top to where the gym leader is. Here is Byron. Uh, you won't me, you won't let me stand next to you. There's not enough space on the tr gym leader platform for you to do that. Dang it. Okay, so um, well, I forget. I think it's first Pokemon since I was a Bronze War. I could be wrong. But as I'm looking at my PP for um, Inferno, we're still in good shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go back to the Pokemon Center and heal. Um, we're just going to take on Byron right here right now. And yeah, it's just with the 
put it back to Pokedex, I guess. And yeah, let's talk to him. Ah, that's the Winberg's gym badge. Uh, I see, I see, you defeated my son, but that's no surprise, he still has much to learn. In place of my son, Rourke, I, Byron, will take your challenge. So the sixth gym leader of Sinnoh, let's do this. Master, user of still type Pokemon, I should say. Not really master, but user. I guess you could call him master, but, you know. So he starts off with a bronze over, that's level 36, okay. Interesting, interesting. So I'm gonna go for a flamethrower. Because I don't want to risk missing with Fire Blast. I want to see how much a Flamethrower does just to test the water. Hopefully when it kills it, that'd be nice. But we'll have to see. And obviously this Brian, br this Bronzor has um, the ability Levitate. Because um, it was able to... Ooh, burn, nice. It was able to um, get hit by like a Fire-type move. So yeah. So kind of, I always kind of have to test it, like, if I use a ground-type move or a fire-type move to make sure that the Brunzoi, so I can s see which one, which weakness it is, um, that will um, be super effective against the ground or fire-type moves. But with that burn, the Brunzoi goes down, so that's awesome. I, Inferno did get hit by extra sensory, but, you know, that's okay. So he's going to send out his big gun, so I'm going to send out my big gun, the Jetta, the girl Flotzel is gonna kick this Bastiodon's butt. So Bastiodon, I think it's rock steel type, so it's four times with the fighting I believe. And I'm just gonna surf this thing up. This is level 39 versus level 39. Let's see. Let's see who survives. <laughs> yeah. Bastiodon has a lot of high physical defense though, so keep that in mind. So don't try to like try to weaken him down slowly I mean you want to hit him you want to hit this bastard on hard just like the vice giver said you got to hit his Pokemon hard for them to take damage you know this uh, the surf should faint it though so two surf should faint this bastard on there we go and he only has one Pokemon left so it's I forget that what that one Pokemon is though could be a bronze on I don't think he has a bronze on actually let's go to level 37 she's trying to learn toxic but I don't want to, you know, I don't want, I just don't want Rose to learn Toxics, I'm sorry. Okay, Steelix, okay. So let's switch back to Inferno then. Okay, Steelix, nice. So it's level 36. I'm gonna go all out with the. Um, what was this mouse Pokemon? This is where we make our stand. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go all out Fire Blast on this thing. And it hits. Awesome. This should faint it, but we'll see if it does. I shouldn't call it too soon. You never know what could happen. So yeah, this Steelix is level 36. And it goes down with one Fire Blast. Okay, cool. So he wasn't that hard, actually. I was lucky with the burn with the um, bronze ore because he could use the healing item, but luckily the burn took care of the rest of that bronze ore's HP. But other than that, we kind of had a breeze. Two surfs on the Bastiodon. We got lucky with the bronze ore, as I said before. Thanks for 4,680 uh, pocket ores. I almost said experience points. And then we had like one lucky fire boss hit with the Steelix. Nice. You, are, you were strong enough to take down my prized team of Pokemon. In recognition of that power, I give you this, the Mind Badge. We get the Mind Badge from Byron. Having the Mind Badge enables you to use the hidden move strength out any time outside of battle. It's about time. We've had that TM since like the Lost Tower. Jeez. We can use it finally. We can finally use it outside of battle though. That's awesome. And now you have six gym badges. That means all Pokemon up to level 70 will obey you without question. Here, take this too. The TM91 um, Flash Cannon, I believe what it is, is what it is. He didn't get a chance to use it in battle. I think some of his Pokemon may have had it. But he explains in his text. Yeah, TM91 is flat, contains the move Flash Cannon. If it hits, it may will also lower the target's special defense. It's a very powerful um, still type move too. So to, to get out of here is just going around to these panels and just going in like a square shape. And once you do that, you can find to the another red panel and then go all the way back down. And then there you go. Nice. 
Let's talk to the Vice Giver. He's still turning the same. He's in the same direction as I talked to him last when at the beginning of this gym. At the beginning of this video, man. Can I leave City Pokemon Gym later, Byron? Excited if I train as Sam, Steven. Awesome. So yeah, oh Steven, you beat them the gym later. Good going. That makes it six gym badges. I'll tell you what, you're really turning into quite into one fine trainer. Uh, if you were to say you are going to try to become the Pokemon champ, no one, no one laugh at you now. No one laugh at you now. I'm in your corner, kiddo. Thanks, advice giver. I just call him the advice giver. Oh look at Sam. Hey, uh, that's the mine badge. Good going. Uh, you're tough enough to consider becoming the champ. Of course, I'm tougher, so it's not going to actually happen. Hey, I can dream too. Anyway, Steven, come with me to the library. So, he wants us to come to the library, the Cantaloupe Library. That's what, that's where Cynthia told us, um, to research Pokemon if we wanted to figure out new stuff. So, yeah, um, there's the library right here, and you can read the sign too, Cantaloupe Library. But I'm gonna heal my Pokemon. So, I'll be right back. Okay, so it's just um, I'll put it right here, and um, trying to think. I can show off my badges in a second, just like I always do, I guess. So let's put Karen right there, and bronze right here. Yeah, that works. Okay, so let's check out the badges now. Probably a rusty. Yeah, of course, Sarah. I'll come back to where um they're all clean. Okay, so I really s literally spent the last six minutes trying up these badges, but there you go. The mine badge is um next to the roll badge. It's the second uh badge on the second row. So that's pretty cool. So there's that. Um. Yeah. Other than that, we're gonna meet uh. Cody at the, not Cody, but Sam, there I go again, calling him Cody, when he's Sam, we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna meet Cody in the library, he's already in there probably, so yeah, so this has been the end of my Pokemon Diamond re uh, Redo Walk the Guide part, and the next part we'll take on the library and see what's going on from there, so yeah, so this has been Jacko again, I would like to thank you for watching again, goodbye, and I'll see you guys in the next part of my Pokemon Diamond Redo Walk the Guide.